Welcome to the Big Seance Podcast. I'm Patrick Keller of BigSeance.com, and this is a place for an open discussion on all things paranormal, but specifically topics like ghosts and hauntings, paranormal research, spirit communication, psychics and mediums, and life after death. So basically, anything that pops up in my paranormal world. The candles are already lit, so you might as well come on in and join the seance. Hey, Patrick, it is Kevin Gilbert. How are you, sir? I heard the uh, the show with Susan Davey where you were asking for, <laughs> for volunteers to call the hotline. I forgot about this number. Anyway, all I want to say is I am so happy that you are back from your hiatus, sounding better than ever and putting forth amazing content once again. Uh, you're enjoying your retirement. You're back doing the Big Seance podcast on a regular basis, and we're back doing our uh, our Zoom Paranerd sessions, and I'm looking forward to the one that's actually coming up uh, this weekend uh, as we uh, get ready to celebrate Halloween, Big Seance style and Paranerd style. And I'll be sure to be there. And once again, so glad you're back. You rock. And 2024 is right around the corner. It's going to be a great year. Hey, Paranerds. I want to thank our friend Kevin Gilbert for the great voice feedback. He called the hotline. And if you want to know that number, it's in the outro at the end of every episode. Have a question? Just want to send a warm fuzzy like Kevin did? You can call in, too. Kevin was talking about our monthly Patreon Paranerd parties on Zoom, and we have one coming up this weekend, just before Halloween. Kevin is part of a really cool group of Paranerds who also get to hear their names read at the end of every episode. They help to support this show, and they totally rock. You, too, can learn how to become a Patreon supporter by going to patreon.com slash big seance. And that link will also be in the show notes. Thank you, Kevin. Okay, y'all. About a week ago, Karen A. Dahlman joined me live as we recorded the conversation you're about to hear now. Some of you might have been there. So you'll hear us giving shout outs to paranerds and taking their questions. I've edited the conversation a bit just to make it a better listening experience for a podcast. But I also want to say, I dropped the ball on a few things the day of this live. For about the first four minutes, you'll hear that I didn't have my correct microphone set. So stay with it because it does get better. But even after that, I usually record my own voice from my own computer, and I uh, also forgot to do that. So... I ended up having to use the audio from StreamYard, which is how we do our lives. So I did my best to make it okay, but the conversation with Karen is fabulous, as always. If you're interested in watching rather than listening, you can watch the replay on our YouTube channel or on the Big Seance Facebook page. So here we go. I think you're going to love it. Listen, I'm going to bring Karen in, but here's a word of warning, a little word of warning. Karen and I have not been in the same room for like a year, so it could be dangerous. It could get dangerous. It could get weird and scary because we haven't caught up in a while. So <laughs> so who knows what could happen today with Karen A. Dalman? Oh, we have some comments. We have some comments. Hello, it's Tracy. I know exactly who that Tracy is. Facebook user says, hi, Patrick. And then look, Karen A. Dahlman. She's apparently snooping on YouTube while she's getting ready to come on. She says, hello. And uh, James says, I see you from the UK. Love the podcast. and love Karen. One of Karen's fans. Hey, Perrin Nerds. Hey, Karen. Okay, I'm going to bring in Karen A. Dahlman, and I'm glad that everything is working and everybody is here. (gasps) 
Here we go. Oh, what a cool cup. Imagine that, you guys. Look, cheers to Patrick Keller. Cheers to all y'all from the big seance. I'm drinking a little coffee. I'm drinking a little Folgers, Patrick. Ooh. <laughs> inside joke. We have an inside joke about some Folgers. And uh, I don't I don't know. I don't know that we should do anything about that because we might scare some people away. No, have, it's, just, uh, it's just too funny, you guys. I always I have to share it because I don't know why we were even doing this. Do it. So do it. Should we tell them, Patrick? We got to. So randomly, I don't know how, but randomly when we were at the haunted castle house mm -hmm. in um I always forget the little town in Missouri that it's in. Do you remember? I always forget too, because it's like five people. Our <laughs> friends Steve and Judy Skinner, they're fabulous. They always invite us to the haunted castle house. And I forget the little town it's Brumley. in. Brumley. Brumley, that's right. Oh my gosh. Well, we were um, at uh, our second visit at Brumley at the Haunted Castle House, and we took my friends, the Mats, and we took Marla. We took Marla. Marla was there. And randomly, Karen and I, and the Mats, I guess, One of the mats. started singing One of the, mats. the Folgers theme song. You know, that's what you do in haunted places when you're exploring the paranormal universe. But you guys, you, uh, we were so into it. And then I can't really, I can't say you guys, I can't. I don't think Matt can really either. Oh, look. Oh, look. Oh, look. <laughs> That's William it. joined in. It's full That's juice it. in your cup. Except we had like 16 part harmony somehow. And yeah. Anyway, it was silly. When Patrick and I get together, it's pretty silly. And, but we have similar silly humor and that's what makes it so much fun. But also magic things happen. Oh. We have lots of cool spirit communication mm -hmm. when we get together and break out, you know, different talking boards. And mm -hmm. you also are very good. Anytime, you know, we bring friends and guests in, we have like little talking board sessions and little training sessions and things like that. It's just, it's just fun. It's not serious. I mean, it can get serious, but it's also just fun. You know, I think when you can play, kind of elevates the energy and it makes it that much more easier to connect. That's what I find. So that we have, and, and you kind of have to balance it because you get real serious and you're sitting there for hours listening to things or interacting or whatever you're trying to do. And then sort of have those bursts of activity and laughter just really makes it fun. I think, I think we have the best time doing our spiritual investigations and ghost hunts for that reason. Okay. And I just realized right now that my microphone is my um, crappy computer microphone it is and not my microphone yeah it wasn't very loud i was going to ask you why we're not hearing you that well is that better guys did that change it is it better now oh my gosh let me know if my audio is better this is the second time oh. that i forgot to check the audio it's really good now okay so the audio got sexier Ooh. that's good <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Somebody let me know. <laughs> oh, William says it's better. Thank you. One of these days, I'm going to get this live stuff down. That also means that the beginning of the podcast, when we put this out for the podcast, it will sound really crappy at the beginning. So that's neat. Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so we have got a number of things that we wanted to talk about today, and we we don't have a set structure you know when karen and i get together we just bounce all over the place so and, and we also have we've left room for working in questions from the chat oh somebody says sexy as hell awesome <laughs> love it love it it is it's a lovely voice <laughs> make me dance oh my god that's definitely an english term <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, that is funny. Okay, it, see, we've already we're off the rails. What, off the what, rails. Are we, what but have you been doing today, Patrick? <laughs> well, we <laughs> earlier I was gonna say I was gonna point out that you have the loveliest Halloween decor, and you were upset that I were not sporting Halloween. And obviously, I don't have my stuff together here. Today. You guys, he's he's all about Halloween. This is what you look forward to every I year, know. and I'm like. Where's your Halloween? -ish? I should like have something hanging back here. You should, or yeah. I thought you put one of my. I've I've got a uh, an astronaut mask. I could have worn. I know. 
I've got um, a plague doctor mask that makes me have to take my glasses off, but then I will be looking in the opposite direction because I can't see. <laughs> so you know, it's it's hell getting old. You could you you could have hung a skeleton behind you. I could have. Mm-hmm. I'm a slacker. Yep, I've you got, are. Uh, lots of skeletons. So I, I have my skeleton cat today, and I don't know if this is—is is this backwards or no, are we seeing it's, it normally? It's forwards. You got it right. Okay, awesome. We have this lovely book that actually Karen's cat Jack mm-hmm. gave us a heads up on. If you will remember, mm-hmm. three or four years ago, I think it was longer than that. Longer than that, it was, we were think- having at. It may have been our first live Ouija session. It was, it was one of our first ones. And he, then, yeah, go ahead and tell the story. It's hysterical. Oh, yeah. This is the funny one. Because I had just spent an all-nighter on my own. Yeah. By myself at the Lemp Mansion. That's right. Yes. Like, for real, me alone in the Lemp Mansion. So really cool experience, but I was like, oh my gosh, I've got this live, this Halloween live thing with Karen the next day. I'll sleep a little bit. I'll do it. No, I did not sleep at the Lemp Mansion. And so I woke up early in the morning, came back to the house to do this live. It was really produced. It was super cool. I was super excited and had lots of plans. And so during this session, you see me in the camera going. Oh yeah. He was nodding off you guys. I was like, Get it together, Patrick. Once again, I'm saying get it together. But it was like this hardcore Ouija session that went on for like two hours. And there were all we were answering people's questions. Yeah. And, the you know, the board was saying all kinds of stuff. And then all of a sudden someone came through and there were even, I think, some tears. Yeah. And you and Rodney, your board partner, it was like, what? I, oh, my gosh, this is Jack. And I'm like, who's Jack? <laughs> and you said, Jack's my cat. He's writing a book. <laughs> and so i was like what he he jumps in the middle of one of your i think i forget who it was one of your people that had written in and he the guy was writing a book about some some topic and it sounded really cool and jack goes the planchet changes you guys and it goes all of a sudden it changes and it spells out so should we tell him about the book i'm writing <laughs> that's right and i go that's jack and you go who, who's jack I go, my cat and then rodney says <laughs> They were believing you until you told them that your cat is now writing a book. And then we all, <laughs> we all started laughing. But you guys, the weirdest part was this. You see Jack walking down the hall. He's on the video. Do you remember that, Patrick? And, and yes. I had three cats. Only Jack walked through. And that's when Jack was talking to us on the board. It was the weirdest thing. And Jack really did write a book. And that is, that's Jack's book that Patrick was just showing you. And Jack at the time was present. On Earth. Was very much alive. And now, since then, Jack has is is in spirit with us and all, helped you from spirit, too, if I'm... Am I correct? He did. He started the book um, when he was very much alive in physical form, and then he finished it when he was in spirit. That's how we finally finished it when he was already transitioned, crossed over. I love it. I love it. It was a process. It was a process. It's like channeling... Because so, so, you guys, that's what you got to understand. The Ouija board is not just for dead people. The Ouija board can become a tool for channeling. And, you know, people channel information such as psychics. You can, you can channel, of course, like do mediumship. You can channel spirit guides, angels, and even animals. You can tap into the consciousness of sentient beings and other dimensions, whether it's this dimension or another dimension or a parallel dimension. Let's just say it that way. So this tool becomes a way for yourself, you're doing all the channeling, you're doing all the work, you're the one operating the tool, but it becomes a technique or a format, a theatrics, in which to show the channeling happening. And so this was a, this is Patrick, as we've talked about this before, this wasn't like overnight, I started channeling the animals. I mean, that, that they, they came to me, gosh, in 96, but I started using the board in 73. So it took that long time for me to even get to the animal kingdom. And now channeling animals is, is very easy, very easy to do at the board. But I got to tell you about Jack's story, which was really unique. So when Jack came to me, just before we did our show, I think it was probably several months earlier when he said, I want to write a book. I was petting him, you guys. I was sitting, he was sitting on the floor. I was just petting him and just have my alone time with Jack because Jack came to me as a very abused cat. I rescued him from a house with his half brother, Panzer. And I just like to spend a lot of alone time with him because he was so skittish. So we'd have our moments where I'd sit there and just pet him. And all of a sudden I heard, 
I want to tell you the story when cats had wings. And I'm like, what? That's not my, those were not my thoughts. And I channel enough to know when new energies are coming through off the board. And I was off the board, you guys. I was not using the board. I was just sitting there with my cat. I heard that and I said, Jack? And I could tell that was him. And so I got on the board later with my board partner and he says, I want to be an author. I want to write a book. And that's how it started. And he kept telling me his story over the years, but he would tell it sparsely or whatever. It might take a few months. He'd come back and tell me something. Some days he said, I'm just working on it or we're not quite ready. But he told me three versions. And one of the versions was really about him, how his life was before he came into my world, which was all the abuse. And I said, well, Jack, that may not make a very good story for people. And the second book, <laughs> and the, the second story is more like how he felt like he was broken from his background, but yet I never saw him as being broken. And then finally the third story emerged. He goes, now I want to talk about when cats had wings. So it was like he had to get stuff out first. And then he finally told me that story. And again, you guys, this happened on and off the board, telepathy channeling, telepathically, or with the board, and also in dreams, you guys. That's the cool part. Also in dreams when I finally got the final part of the story and I knew it was time to actually pin it. Now, I just said a lot there. Any questions, Patrick, or comments? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be, looking for, I'll be looking for any questions that come in. But I want, who is this book for? Tell us who the book is for. Okay, so the book, so when Jack wrote it, we thought it was going to be a children's book. And he says, no, he goes, I want it for... He could call them little people and big people. That to, to him meant adults and children, big people and little people. I said, okay. So that's where the idea of making it an illustrated story. Jack always said, he goes, yeah, no, it needs to be pictures. I want you to draw the pictures. I said, Jack, I think I'd rather hire an illustrator. He says, well, you know best. So <laughs> I did hire an illustrator. <laughs> and that's his name is Maz Fars, and he's, he's on the cover of the book with us. He did such a wonderful job. And will job. you show some of the Pages. I would love do you to. mind doing that? No, I don't. Okay, look at this. You They're guys. beautiful. Such beautiful pictures yeah. um, that this gentleman captured. And I asked Jack, I said, what do you think of these pictures? He said, he said, he's got it just right. You know, the, I interviewed several artists and I, I just thought his were just spectacular. He captured the image of the cats. He captured Jack's story really well. So, so I got to tell you, this, this is a really cool part about the story. So I'm, I'm really talking about the backstory. Okay. But let me tell you this, the, the book is about unconditional love between our animal friends, specifically in this case, cats, the felines and human beings. But it relates to anybody with any kind of pet, any kind, whether it's a fish, a bird, horse, it doesn't matter. It's the fact you've had a relationship with another species. And we're animals too, right? We're animals. So it's just having, having that interspecies relationship and knowing what unconditional love is about. And so the story is about the unconditional love between um, humans and, again, the animal species, in this case, a cat. But this is how the story finally came to full fruition. So I've been working on this story with Jack for quite a few years, again, on and off the board. One night, and this was last fall, I had a board session with Jack. And we were talking about his book. And I said, Jack, I think I'm ready. I've got some time to set aside. Are you ready? He goes, I'm ready. The next morning, no kidding, you guys, I woke up from a dream. And this is what I heard repeating in my mind. You know, those dreams you hear certain songs or phrases. Well, I had a phrase. And this is what it said. And I quickly tapped it out on my phone. It said, not too long ago, but within your distant past, lived a hierarchy of angels known as the winged kitty cats. That is the very first line of the poem. Once I heard that, I went, oh my God. And now remember, Jackson spirit, this came through a dream. I went, got it, Jack. And I could just feel Jack's energy, sat down, was able to write it out like that, just fast as I could. And then I put it on, I, then I typed it up, made a few corrections. I had an editor look at it, just a few small things. But other than that, once I was ready, Jack was ready, and we kind of had the idea come full, full circle, it just flew out of me. So it's Jack's story. It's his idea. But he said, you write it in the manner in which it's best. So my part that I added to it was the poetic aspect of it. But I got to say, he started that with for me in the dream. And then I picked it up and went from there. So it was really, it, we're, I can't claim this book. It's, we're co-authors on the book. Absolutely. And it it is adorable. And I can also see how this book would 
be really helpful as also therapy if you recently Mm -hmm. lost Mm -hmm. an animal, not even just a cat, but if you recently lost an animal to spirit. And yeah, I I have a question because, you know, some of us relate more to dogs. Some of us relate more to cats. Is this, I mean, have you asked Jack if it's the same thing with dogs? Absolutely. We've had that conversation about all animals. Yes. It's having that, again, that relationship. Because often people find that we're, it's hard. We're so conditional, right? We're so programmed. We're so complex as humans in a sense. And we want people to behave a certain way or get this from that person or not this or, you know, we're just so controlling <laughs> and we expect a lot. <laughs> so it's like we have a hard time being unconditional. But we learn this unconditional love, especially from the animals, because they just know how to give it. They're so close to spirit in many ways. One of the things I learned about writing this book with Jack, and I've had this understanding before, and, and, and all of you out there who have had the beauty of, of this relationship, kind of relationship with an animal, and again, it could be a bird, it could be a, a reptile, a horse, it, I mean, it could be fish. I know people have relationships with their fish. I, I, it's amazing. <laughs> I, um, spiders. I mean, I have these beautiful tarantulas out back, and I think I have a relationship with them. Sometimes it's with wild animals. But it's like when you have this type of relationship, you start to see things in the animals. They show you stuff. It's almost like they become like a master teacher for you. And in fact, that's what Jack and Panzer taught me when they actually both transitioned because Jack has, has now been transitioned for four years. He's actually been gone that long. And um, he, just, he talked about the idea that we, they are all their, our master teachers. They're very wise souls. They come here to help us. And we always think, oh, we rescue these animals. The truth is they rescue us. They help us learn certain, I don't know, traits, characteristics. For example, Jack, because of his extreme abuse he had, uh, he wouldn't even let me touch him for 10 months after I had him in the house. Now, my house is like totally cat friendly, you guys. I At that point, <laughs> I brought his half brother with him. And then we got bear and there's three cats living together. And it's very cat friendly. All right? those talking boards to climb around oh, and play and, with. And the cats love the talking boards. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, you know, the, the idea that Jack just had so much hardship and I thought I was rescuing him. The truth was he was teaching me all about patience. And how to love something unconditionally, meaning him, when he couldn't quite give it back to me. So it's really quite a nice relationship when we have animals in our lives. Now, people say, well, I don't do pets. I don't have pets. Well, guess what? These same opportunities present themselves with people, with other people in your lives. So don't feel like you're missing out because we can get this from many different levels. It's just that often an animal can provide it to us in such a loving way. In the beginning of this book, we learn about how Jack is telling the story of uh, kitties being angels, right? And and came from heaven. And by the the end, you talk about how humans, when we adopt a cat or an animal, we are their angels. So the fact that we are angels too. Mm-hmm. And when uh, you and Jack talked about how, like you just said, teaching unconditional love, right? That touched me when I got to that part, because I was like, that is for real true. Mm -hmm. I really do think that, you know, any of the pets that I have had have been some of my greatest teachers in and teaching me about feelings Mm -hmm. and how to treat others. But they're also like, I mean, they really are our therapy animals for everyone. They are. They they help us dig deep within ourselves and sometimes do things, become something more than we already are because now we're, we're taking care of them. Now we're helping them. We're feeding them. So we, we are their angels as well. And Jack pointed that out. He said, he goes, although I was broken by abuse, you always saw me as your angel. And that, you know, when I say, that just still gets me because it was true. Yeah. He was perfect yeah. to me. I mean, I remember your dog, Meryl, and, and Rooney, they're all perfect, aren't they? But they all come with their own personalities that help you learn and, and teach you things, right? Oh, and I can tell you, Rooney has taught us 180 degrees different. Yeah, right? different. Like all of the different lessons, like not one similar lesson from Meryl, completely different lessons, but yet perfect and, and here in, in a part of our life and loving it, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And all my cats are the same way too. They're the different lessons. But you know what's interesting? So what they all have told me, and I've I've had I'm on my 
sick cat now. So I've been getting, I've been having cats since I was like 22. Yeah, 20, 22, almost 23. Um, so I've been doing cats for a long time. So my first two cats talked to me on the board too. In fact, one of my very first cats named Hermes was a big orange cat. And by the way, hidden in this book are all of my cats. My cats are in here. I said, Jack, is that okay? Yeah, Jack tells the story. Jack's the narrator of the story. But all of my cats make an appearance. And so the cat that became the angel, that the, the main character in the story, and they became the human that, well, they, he was the angel that also became, wanted to go live with humans. That is Hermes. And Hermes became that character because back in 1996, this, this is when I learned about animal communication, you guys, on the board. So it was 1996. I was sitting there with my board partner at the time talking to my angel, Mary Angel. And by the way, Patrick, you know her. She comes through on all the shows where people ask questions about their, de their deceased loved ones. She's the one that always comes through and helps bring the information through. So you've met Mary Angel. She says, hello. I can just feel her back here right now. Hello. Hey, peace. <laughs> peace. <laughs> <laughs> Holla. <laughs> Holla out. Shout. Shout out. <laughs> so she goes, you're not going to, she's on the board telling me this. You're not going to believe who wants to talk to you. And I'm like, please. I've been talking to a lot of different beings on this board, so not a problem. She's like, no, this one is going to be different. So what happened was this. She said, okay, you ready? I said, I'm ready. The planchet, kind of like when Jack came through during our show, Patrick, it slowed down, went a different direction, and it spelled out, Hermes cat, I love you. Now, Hermes was that big, fat orange cat, very much alive, sitting in a rocking chair, maybe five or six feet from the table where I was sitting with my board partner, doing a, a session. I said, what? She goes, I told you you wouldn't believe this. She goes, yes, your cat wanted to talk to you. I said, come on. The cat goes meow, meow, and you interpret it. She goes, well, kind of. <laughs> she, she said, it's kind of like that. We feel, it's, okay, guys, this is how animal communication works. There's a little key. You get the messages through images, words, feelings, thoughts, like Jack's words came through my mind. And so the my angel said, we get it, and then we interpret it, and make the messages come through. So it's like the cat spirit or whatever, because he's sitting in our chairs pushing the plant. That's not happening that way. The angel's working with my energy to bring the messages through. So it's basically me channeling the cat with the help of the angels. In this case, Mary Angel is very active, involved in that. And she still is. She still works a lot with the animals as well. So she explained to me how it works and said, you could do this on and off the board, but I kept doing it on the board. Every single one of my cats to this day talks to me on the board. And I just got a new little kitty. Her name's BB, and she's only eight months old. And I spoke to her when she was, I think, five months old, four or five months old. And she said, she talked about the other cats I had in spirit. She was very much aware of Jack and Panzer. And she said, they told, they asked me to, to tell you to go take me swimming. Now, you guys know cats don't like water. And I've got a swimming <laughs> pool. And the other cats were trying to be funny to so put her in the swimming pool. She's like, what, what does swimming mean? Rude. <laughs> I go, yeah, how, how mean and rude is that? Anyway, we got a kick out of that. And, but she did say, she goes, I am here to take care of you. And I got to tell you guys, every animal, every animal I've ever communicated with, or even when we did sessions on, it, like on your show, we've spoken to some, some people about some people's pets before. The concept is this, like I said earlier, they, they're here to take care of us. We're here to take care of them. It's a very mutual thing, but we're, we tend to grow more. They already kind of understand the concept of, um, they're just close to the veil the concept of, of life and, and not so worried about death. They're just about in the moment. They understand that moment uh, of living, but they all say this, is what they all have in common is we come here to take care of you. We come here to teach you. And it's amazing. This little four or five month old kitty telling me this and <laughs> at the age I am. But the reality is that she brings out, like you were mentioning, Patrick, the different aspects that are very different than your other dog, Meryl, who I knew Meryl as well. It's like, it's, she's so different than bear. I just have Bear and Baby now, but and very different than the other cats. Now, people, some people's animals and pets do reincarnate, and I've spoken to some of those. The thing when they do reincarnate, they still, even when we reincarnate, we have a different personality. It's the soul aspect that's there, but we also have different things we're growing from and learning, and same with the animals. So they may not be exactly the same. And people say, "Well, I want that. I want my cat back." And I go, "Well, your cat, that cat personality." is gone. Now a new one comes in. It could be the same soul, but you're going to get other lessons or continuation, but it's going to treat it, treat your animal differently because they all want to be treated differently. Even if they do reincarnate, 
I have to say, none of my cats are reincarnated to me. In fact, here's a funny thing, you guys. Panzer, my black cat, he's in this book as well. Uh, Panzer, I said, I was talking to him, and he's been in spirit for five years now. And he said, I said, well, P Panzer, are you going to reincarnate and go live with somebody else? And he says, well, I'm thinking I might become a smelly old dog. <laughs> <laughs> he always told me dogs smell funny. <laughs> Sometimes they do. Sometimes they do. Yeah. Sometimes they do. Karen, where do people get this? Where can where can they find this? Yeah, it's definitely um it's on Amazon, it's in Barnes and Noble. And I notice Amazon now has the hard copy. Uh, usually you could used to want to be able to get it at Barnes and Nobles, but they have the hard copy, soft copy, and there's also a um Kindle version as well. And this book Cool, really, I didn't know there was a hard copy version. There's a hard copy. Awesome. It's right I have it right back here. It's Beautiful. really nicely done it's beautiful this makes great gifts for people you know and again this book is not it's for kids because it's the kids pictures but it's also for adults and so i call it it's for it well i jack said jack goes i'm writing a book for the big and the little people and he said it's for all ages and for the young at heart that's why that was my contributions for the young at heart so this will this is a book that i find that people read it it makes them emotional in a good way, because it makes you think about your relationship with your pets. And also, it, it's a good story. It's a fun story. Um, and it does bring up memories, like you said. And I, I don't know, Patrick, did you get a little teary eye when you read it? Yes. And, and I was just going to say, kind of like I was saying earlier, I know it's not meant to be a book for grieving animal parents, but that's how I could see this really being useful. If you know someone is struggling with the loss of an animal or a pet. Mm -hmm. Um, or a cat, for sure. I could see this being something that would would touch them and and um, warm their heart a little bit and maybe help them help them through it a little bit. I agree. And I when when we wrote this together, I wasn't even thinking that. I think Jack was. I think he just knew that it could touch people. And he's, he's he really likes the success, success of the book. You guys, it's selling all over the world. I'm really I'm really excited about it. And especially the hard copies. There's some, a lot of those. I usually sell the soft copies a lot when I'm in person. I bring hard copies and soft copies. So anytime I'm speaking somewhere, I'll ha I always have these, all my books, but I'll have, have these books with me now too. Um, but I get the feedback that it, everybody says they get emotional, get the box of Kleenex, but it's also helped them get in touch with something about their animals, whether it's a, an animal that's alive or an animal they've lost. But all of us, and we get to a certain age, you probably lost several animals, as I have, when you, when you start getting up there in, age, in years. We just don't have to quite go there what year that is. Yeah, I always uh, think to myself when it's time for me to cross over whenever that is, it's going to take some time before I get to that life review, before I head on over there, because I've got a whole, you know, line of pets that I'm going to be either seeing or mm -hmm. looking for <laughs> as soon as I get over there. I think you will. And I think you're also going to be pulling some shenanigans. That's what I think, too, in spirit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to. I'm going to be coming back, y'all. I'm going to be coming back and having some fun here, too. And I know that's childish. But no, it's not. It, it's, that's it's, my plan. But you, but that's but that's funny. <laughs> that's funny because that's how you are, you know, and that and we do. I spend my whole life looking for right. communication from spirit. So I'm going to help some peeps out and going to return the favor a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'll be too. I was, I've packed with some of my friends and it's like, I said, if I go before you go, get that board out. That's how I'm coming. Get that board yeah, out. Yeah, well, and I know, you know, there's some spirit-minded people and, and mediums I've talked to who said, you know, when you get to the other side, you're not going to care. You're going to be so in awe of it that you're just going to be like, I'm done with Earth. I'm <laughs> moving on. And I'm like, are you sure? Because I'm not sure about that. I think I'm going to want to come back. Yeah. You never know. I, I haven't experienced it yet. <laughs> yeah, we don't know. But, but you know, some of the people I talk to who have transitioned, they do say that it's like so different that, that they really want to not hold anybody back. I mean, the people that are grieving, they kind of do want to move on. But I've still had conversations with some of the people and some people, some of us all know, like Rose Brown and Riley. And I have no doubt that you can do that without coming back, you know. Yes, but correct. Especially like when you think about the forefathers of spirit communication and paranormal research and scientists, you know, if, if their life work is surrounding themselves with this question of life on the other side and being able to, to communicate with others, I would think that 
it would be okay for them. They would also have the interest of maybe coming back to visit every now and then. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, just through, through other people that can channel, there's, there's quite a few through history that have done that, been able to channel through other mediums. And, and think about it. When you get a reading and you want to talk about your, your deceased loved ones, the ones who are in spirit, they will come through. Doesn't mean they're doesn't mean they're stuck. Doesn't mean they're not in the light. It just means that they can still reach you. They can hear you. I think one of the most beautiful ways I've heard about the afterlife explained to me, it was when Rosemary Ellen Guiley had transitioned mm -hmm. and she's, she's been gone for four years now as well. And we start talking probably about three or four months after her transitional period. And she still will talk to me, but she says now using the board, it's almost like stuttering. It's really difficult. But in the beginning, she said, she says, when you first, when she goes, says, when I first got over there and she's told me a lot about it, I'm sharing some of that in the book I'm writing right now. But she said that it's so beautiful. It's like you're sitting on, this, these are her words now. She says, it's like you're sitting on the lap of God and you're surrounded and enveloped in this most incredible love. And you hear a cacophony of sounds coming at you, but it's melodic and beautiful. And it turns out after a while, you begin to focus in and you find out that each of those sounds is a different voice of another person you knew in life. And they're coming at you simultaneously, yet you could be simultaneously in conversations with them. And you will hear everything, feel everything, and know everything. And it's as if you're with that person in that room having a conversation. Multitasking on a whole different yes. level. <laughs> yeah, this is multidimensional multitasking. And I thought, how beautiful is that? The whole time she's enveloped in this and incredible sensation of love yeah so there's some and look what tracy says tracy says when you both go to the other side please stop by and say hello to me <laughs> oh hey tracy of course yes likewise i know some people too i know some other people that are like uh and you better stop by when that happens <laughs> better be at the foot of my bed scare me in the middle of the night <laughs> well and i know i've talked about it on the podcast several times but my mother and I, for sure, and I've talked about it with other family members, but my mother and I, for sure, have a plan for coming back Ooh. to, you know, let the other one know that we've made it and that things are okay and just to give some communication. And so if I cross over before my mother, I told her to be looking out on her bedside table because I will be... <laughs> jacking with stuff and moving things around and flipping the lights off and that's how she's gonna know how about an apparition that it's me well if i can do that of course if i can muster an apparition <laughs> absolutely but i'm also gonna do i'm also going to perform some classic ghost tricks like i might even look for a sheet with two holes you never oh know. my gosh that is hysterical <laughs> i'm gonna do some EVPs. how about you Oh, yes. I am going to do some EVPs. We'll do the Estes method. We'll be the ones in the background yes. going, scare, <laughs> scare, dark, murder, right? We'll be doing that in their ears. They'll be going, oh, I think I heard murder. Uh, Karen Dahlman, uh, Patrick Keller. <laughs> <laughs> I want a pizza. I'm hungry. That's Fat cookie? Yeah, that's right. Fat cookie. <laughs> oh, you guys. Oh, And we digress. Oh. Uh We've done the Estes method before, and we really have some interesting things come through. We've done a lot of Estes method. I love the Estes method. Especially at the Haunted Castle House. Yes. And there's always, always stuff coming through at the Haunted Castle House. Oh, my gosh. It's great. Facebook user says, love the show. Karen! Hey! Well, who you guys, the problem is Facebook user. We don't know who you are. I wanted to do a shout out to you, but cool. You Yay. can just make another, you can just make another comment and tell us who you are. All you guys can. There's a few Facebook users. Yeah. Thank you for joining us here, you guys. Throw some questions in the chat if you have questions. We can talk generally more about uh, animal communication. We mm -hmm. can talk about spirit communication. Ouija. Yeah. Ouija. Plenty of things about Ouija. Speaking of BB, BB is your new cat, right? Yeah. Is that what you said? BB? Yes, BB. I saw BB acting a fool and being all <laughs> kinds of cray with your live with Claire Broad. Can you and believe that? that was hilarious. <laughs> oh, she was like jumping through, going around. There was a big pumpkin over here. She was doing Velcro in the back of my chair. I couldn't pick her off. She was eating my hair, coming over the corners, around the back. And I'm like trying to talk about twin flames, soul mates, soul contracts, and baby. Now, this is what I had to do, you guys. Hey, Ben, I had to close the door. 
I'm in my room of woo with the walls of Ouija. You guys got wall Ouija's everywhere. And she's pretty good in here. But when I have a light and computer set up a certain way and all stuff sitting out and a microphone, she becomes just a terror, living terror, but it's hysterical. <laughs> It's fun. I just have fun with her. So she's she finally let, settled down and sleeping somewhere. I just thought that you were so distracted, and I don't see you distracted in these um, no. kinds of situations. She's like behind much. my back going like this and pulling on my ear. I'm like, uh, Claire? And Claire handled it so well. And I said, now nah, I've learned my lesson. She's got to stay out there. <laughs> we could have done chaos. You, if you haven't, is that video on your YouTube as well, or is that just it on is. Claire's it's, YouTube? It's in. It's on my YouTube channel, my my latest video. If you guys want to see it, we really got in some really cool conversations about soul contracts, specifically twin flames, um, soulmates, and how they really make you grow and look at yourself. And it's a lot of that's misunderstood. So check that video. I just, was just released a few days ago. What is today? Yeah. Thursday. Yeah, I think it was released Sunday. I think it was Sunday. So check that out, and you can then you can meet BB, who's just chaos and, and motion <laughs> yeah i could totally feel the energy in that show because she you know it was you know just a couple of weeks before that where she was on my show talking about the twin flames too yeah and when she first emailed me telling me about all these things you could feel the oh my gosh oh my gosh oh my gosh oh my gosh i have things to say energy oh, major and it's good stuff. It really has major change. Yeah, some great conversations. And then I've had people reach out to me too, just speaking to me more about it privately. I think you're going to see some, I'm going to have somebody else on my show that you guys will know. I won't say the name yet, but we've, we're going to do another deep dive into some similar conversations because I think it's really brought up some really important things to talk about. Um, so we got some questions in here, don't we? Let's, should we do some of those? Yes, we do. Yay. When our loved ones in spirit make oh. us smell their perfume or pipe smoke smell, that actually them creating the aroma or do they create an olfactory mm -hmm. effect that, say, another person in the room wouldn't smell, but we would? A what? A do you have an what? answer for that? Yes, I do. Yeah. It's a great question. I love that you're asking this. Okay, so... What you'll find is that if you're ready to receive it, you're going to smell it. So it's most like the smell was made for you. So others in the room may not smell. And I have had occasional people, two people might hear the same sound or get the same smell. And I've been, I've had an example of that with one of my good friends. Who oh, this, this is Kevin. Sorry. This is Kevin. Okay, hey, Kevin. So oh, thanks. Um, however, I'm going to give you a real personal example. My mother and father were in bed sleeping one night and his mother had just transitioned the day before. And there were some slight issues that were between my mom and, and her mother-in-law that happens. And she, my mom woke up. Now, my dad didn't wake up at all. She's like, Jim, wake up. I think your mother's here. He's like sleeping, you know, snoring or whatever. And so he wasn't, he wasn't there. It wasn't for him. It was for her. So she woke up, smelled the perfume she wore with some Elizabeth Taylor's perfume from the 80s. I forget what it was. Not white shoulders, but something along those, that line. And she would always white wear- White shoulders. Yeah. White diamonds. White diamonds. No, it wasn't that. I know. I get, I, get, I, names up. I, I don't think it was that one either. It was one from the 80s. But my mom mm. said she smelled it and she felt the sense of peace as if there was like, I'm so sorry. I for, or like there's forgiveness and love coming through. And she goes, she goes, that was my mother-in-law that went through. And she, to this day, she'll still talk about it. So in that sense, the smell was for her. And I believe if my dad even woke up, he wouldn't have smelled it. But like I said, I think it depends on the people that need the message. So that spirit's going to reach you in the way where you're open. And if you're good at getting smells, which I'm, I'm sensitive to smells, I will get smells. For a while there, I was getting a smell of, of cigarettes. I don't smoke. Nobody I know smokes, at least now in my life. And I have a friend who transitioned, gosh, it's been six years now. She used to do the board with me. Her name is Rhonda. She's in one of my books. Um, and mm, she transitioned. Yeah. yeah, you probably remember who she was. And um, she used to smoke. When I get the smoke smell, it's her coming around. She gets a message or I get a feeling of her. So, yeah, that's for me to get. So that what a great question. Yeah, I've always, you know, I'm not super, and I know everybody has intuitive skills, but I'm not a medium. But I do feel like smell, like I, I'm very nostalgic when it comes to mm. smell. Uh, you know, I love to eat. I love me some delicious smelling things. I think kind of my, that might be one of my strengths is smell. How about, how about hearing? How about hearing too? I think you, you're good at hearing as well. That could be it. That, uh, that could be it too. I don't know. So this one is Ben. Oh. 
Okay. Let me write I've been this. using my, uh, mm-hmm. le- I almost said lemonade. <laughs> How do you Linderman say this? cards. I, I know which cards he's talking uh, about. Those okay. are beautiful tarot cards. They're gorgeous. Okay. So to do an animal communication for a friend and her two mm-hmm. cats, any tips for yeah. basic mediumship when connecting with them beyond the cards? Okay. This is, uh, I want to talk about the cards first. So I have a, a good friend of mine who also trans I you guys when you get older everybody starts dying I guess you know they start leaving <laughs> uh, I mean it's morbid but it's true you just start you have more friends <laughs> and so a friend of mine she transitioned the same year that Rosemary did it was 2019 in October her name is Cher Lynn and she was on my show she's a mystic artist this is like going way back now we we did a show together in 2018 I think it was so you can watch her but she has these most beautiful cards They're actually uh, Oracle cards. And so I have a deck of her cards and I use them all the time. She taught me from spirit how to use my cards to do communication with a person or between two people where I'm just the person uh, instigating it, (laughs) mediating it, (laughs) and or with the animals. You were probably instigating a little bit too. Knowing me, I'm instigating it. Yeah. True. (laughs) (laughs) Called me up. But you can use cards to that communication. Now, now you ask off the cards or off the board. So this is really good because this is what I've learned. If you want to do animal communication, people communication is a little more complex. And animals' energy. This is what makes the sometimes difficult. I don't want to. Tell, I don't want to really put that in your thoughts. So they're saying say it differently. This is what makes it a little more oh uh, stretching yourself to do the animal communication. It's a very subtle energy. If you've ever worked with the plant shed on the Ouija board. When it starts moving, you just feel that little bit of pull or tug and you follow it. So it's a very, very, very subtle energy. The same with animal communication off the board. The best way, hands down, to start this process, and I do have an article about this in more detail on my website, karenadalman.com, is to sit there like I was with Jack, alone time with that animal, petting it, letting it relax, and allowing yourself to relax. You know, petting an animal actually changes our chemistry. It relaxes us. It gives us a sense of peace, especially when the animal, we're connected to the animal. Doing that allows you to take it down some notches, allows your animal to connect with you, and just be open to what, like when you read cards, you read the card, but also you're open to what else comes into your mind. So you allow those things to come in. You might feel it in your body. You might get a sensation. You make it a words, as I got from Jack was. I want to tell you the story about when cats had wings, full sentences. By then I was already channeling off the board with the guides. So it's like you start feeling things. You might get a smell, the taste, the touch, the sensation, words, and start trusting that. Now, when you do any kind of channeling, you don't go, oh, that's for real, until you've worked on it for some time. Keep notes of the times you sit down with your, let's say it's a pet dog, and you're taking these times alone. Put the date down. I sat her quietly. We did 15 minutes alone. I felt this. I thought that. I heard this. Or maybe you got nothing. That's fine, too. Maybe it's just the way your body's relaxing into it. But you got to make that connection and then allow things to come in. And see, the thing was, it was that people don't trust themselves. I get it. I don't want to either in the beginning. I didn't want to, when I was channeling off the board with the guides and doing verbal communication, which I've done on some of your shows before, it's like, it's hard to believe, oh, I'm making this. You just go, I'm making this up. That's what it's going to feel like. But over time, you start to sense and learn what's yours and what belongs and what belongs to something else, such in this case, an animal. So be patient. Take time with that. Great. Quite another great question. And I, and I have to say, sometimes when I'm with Rooney, but I've also Ooh. done this with Meryl in the past. Sometimes, you know, when we're together and things are quiet or um, he's on my lap or we're out on the deck or something, I will, in my head, mm-hmm. try to send a message and see what happens. And I do think some, it's not ever huge, but I think there are subtle connections that we make. Like, I will ask Rooney if he wants to take a W-A-L-K. And I can't say the word out loud because he'll hear I'll it hear and you freak right out. <laughs> yeah. But... When I ask that question, you know, he will freak out and get incredibly excited. And so sometimes. So you're doing it telepathically. Telepathically, I'll ask him. And sometimes I'll get a little. And I'm like, did you hear me? Do you want to go on a WALK? You know? Yes. Or, you know, if he wants to EAT or um, go O U T S I D E or something like that. (laughs) The R E A T. Yes. 
I said, so I'm that so might be an, a, a fun yeah. trick for people to try as well. <laughs> and that that right there is the second step to it. You start first mm. by letting them come to you, then you start interjecting. So Patrick, you see, you're already doing these things. Everybody, you guys, everybody's already doing it. They say people have a green thumb or really good plants. Trust me, they're feeling that plant's energy. They're connecting with it when they take care of it. You can do this with, with animal life, wildlife, vegetation. I mean, this is some of the strange levels, I call it strange levels of weirdness that I'm starting to talk about in the other, my fifth book I'm writing right now, mm. which is about connecting with all kinds of sentient beings through their consciousness. So this is what we're getting into now. And it can be done very silently in your mind. Sweet. I think this is going back to Kevin who asked about the uh, the perfume. So he uh, said, thanks, Karen. Mm. After my mom passed in 2009, my home was filled with her perfume. Oh, absolutely. I just got chills when you when you wrote that and I heard Patrick read it. Chills. That's a confirmation. Remember when I get chills, you guys get those too. I know when something's truth, you, it just resonates through my body. And then I know when it's like so spot on, it goes like down to my toes and I can feel it. So you, you use yourself. I call myself the walking Ouija board. Because it's not just the board. The board's doing nothing. These are all neutral behind me, you guys. It's me. I've learned to fine tune uh, a lot of my senses. That's what, that's what you're doing. And the board just helped me make it more demonstrative. And to realize I can do this without the board too. So yes, that's, that's what's happening. You, you're smelling something that she knew she could reach you to tell you it's okay. What, what, a lo- what a lovely experience. Dreams. Oh my gosh. They love to come in dreams. The animals do. Humans do, they will come in dreams where it's so loose and you're like, God, I was with my grandmother last night. Yeah, some really cool stuff like that. Hi, Jeffrey Peck. Hey, Jeff. Woohoo. The last live I did was with Jeffrey Peck. I was also a hot mess at the beginning of that. Did last he push live. you to do Jeffrey? That did life. you push him to do that? Because Patrick usually won't unless you say nudge, nudge. Push. I don't remember if Jeffrey pushed me to go live or if I said because I had come off of being on hiatus, right? Yeah. So maybe I decided, hey, let's, you know, have a big rah rah, do something live. But I really don't go live enough to be practiced enough to I really need <laughs> I need some practice with this it. This is why I come on every now and then and I tell Make sure you choose right. the sexy microphone. Make sure you have your camera working. Which you didn't have today. No, none of those things. That's okay. And we even <laughs> we've been prepared for this. I said, where's your yeah. Halloween stuff, you know? Yeah. You know, I I just didn't prepare enough for it. So <laughs> um Bill says I every so often have one or both my dogs appear in a oh. dream. They normally just do like they usually did and come over to me for attention. Does that mean anything other than I'm thinking about them? Well, okay. That's a good question. It, it's a great question. You, yes, of course you're thinking about them. And sure your subconscious mind is thinking about them and you miss them. But think about how it might work both ways. And this is what I always say to people. So yes, we have dreams and dreams are really to work out stuff of the day, residue of the day, or, or you're the character in every dream. You, the dog really represents you. So look at dreams on many levels. There's not just one way of viewing this. It's those dreams that are so lucid where you're like, I'm here, I'm here. This is happening. And you kind of just know that, you know, do you guys know what I'm talking about? Patrick, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Where it's so, yeah. Uh huh. And you wake up, you go, wait. I have a hand. I like, there are four or five dreams total that I can count on my hand ah. that have been like that. I have quite a few. This happens for me commonly. I have, this is what I like to So, Bill, if you have the ability to do this and become lucid in your dream, that's when you're aware that you're actually dreaming and you can start directing your dream. Then you can take it and go hang out with your dogs and do stuff too. I mean, it sounds like they're already coming to you. But yeah, just look at how vivid it is, how strong it leaves you feeling. And so I, what I say is, you know, they're going to come through the best way they can. They're not going to, they're not going to come through to scare you. If you're like, oh my God, there's my dog and it's like real and I miss them. And that might be too much for you. It might be too much emotions, but I find that they do come through easily that way. So funny story or interesting. When Panzer transitioned, I was in 2018. Uh, one of my girlfriends knew how much I just love. I love all my cats. Okay. But you know, when one transitions, you're like, oh God, I'm so sad. Cause it's, it's real. You're losing a big part of your heart. So she sent me these cute little earrings, little miniature black cat earrings, and I'd wear them. And I just put them on and I had a dream that night. Now, this could have been my subconscious mind, but I don't know because Panzer had just transitioned about two weeks earlier. And I said, I got to see you again. I got to see you again. And in this dream, he came to me and he was a lot larger now, like a bigger cat. Like he was small, but he was probably like about that big. And he all of a sudden split into two and said, look, there's two of me now. 
I'm like, how cool is that? And I woke up, I go, oh my God, the earrings. I have two black cat earrings. Oh. But how fun is that? I didn't even think of that. So it could have been my subconscious possibly. But the bottom line is this, we're connecting with that energy on some level, on some level to say it's not real or it's just your imagination. Well, imagination is where all this begins, really. And you have to be open to these connections happening. And then it begins taking a life of its own. So I, I, this, this book I'm tackling now about consciousness gets into some of these concepts because is it is it like, as they say, many wise sages say, am I the dreamer creating the dream or is the dream creating me or having me? And so it's kind of chicken before the egg, egg, the chicken, you know, we don't know which, which, which is first. It's that kind of concept, but we have to explore these things. It gets complicated with the dreams. I love it. All right. So does anyone have a negative experience or impression from an animal spirit? It seems like the majority of these experiences mm. seem overwhelmingly positive. So that's, that's, so that's this person question. is looking for another, you know, side of it. Has anybody had any negative experiences? Yes. Well, think about this. So you, oh, an, from an animal spirit. Okay. So I was going to say a lot of times we are animals, we, we attract, I should say, animals to us in a sense, like even wild animals, like you may be walking down a path, I go hiking and there's like all of a sudden a rattlesnake sitting there. You might go, what is the meaning of rattlesnake to me? Why does this cross my path? I see, I have to look at everything is so connected. Everything has a purpose in place. So that's in this realm. You're talking about in another realm. So I have heard people talk about, when you say animals, we have to be really, um, I don't know if you're talking about normal animals, or you're talking about like cryptids, because people do have some uh, crazy experiences with animals in another dimension. I guess you could call that spirit. They're not in our dimension. And there might be like a dog man or the moth man, where there were some mm -hmm. really negative experiences, impressions. I find that if you have your own pet that you're connected to, and you have this relationship, it's going to be positive. So that that's what I'm mostly talking about today, because I, I don't have, I haven't had those negative cryptid experiences, but I know people who have, and have told me about it. I would like to ask a Facebook user and let us know who you are, but I would like to ask Facebook user if they have had, yes. if that's maybe why they're asking this, if they have had a negative experience because i have heard people who, who have and does that is that like again because they're in another dimension um and i've had people that have told me about extraterrestrials who've had very bad experiences they're in another dimension do we call that spirit or what do we call that so um i say yes you could have those impressions or experiences as well really so karen i guess one of the last things i would like to talk about because most people who have who know me or you are going to know the answer to this question. They know how we feel about and for, for sure how you feel about communication and the Ouija board. Mm -hmm. And I have been, you know, surrounding myself in the uh, uncanny world of Danny Robbins, who is this huge personality in England right now on the BBC and has a TV show and a book. I've been reading the book and a really, really popular number of podcasts on, you know, investigating the paranormal and Ooh. talking to people about, about their ghost experiences and ghost stories and haunted locations. And I've really been resonating with him and the way that he always has two experts on every show, one more skeptical, one more um, prone to be on the believer side, and they mm -hmm. kind of hash things out. But he really focuses on the people. If you listen to one of my, actually the, the last podcast of mine on the big seance, Susan Davey comes on yeah. and gives everybody kind of a summary of that show and why she thinks people would like it. And I've been trying to get Danny Robbins on the show and I've been in touch and we're trying to work things out. But I just got yesterday to two chapters on Ouija and talking Ooh. boards. And I was really taken back. And like, I guess it's been so long since I've just been okay with the talking board or the Ouija board. Mm -hmm. And you know that I struggle to get much communication from it at all. So I'm not afraid of it because you know, I make I make the joke that it's sometimes a coaster on my desk and, you know, their de decor and I have trays with a Ouija board on oh, them yeah. and I have coasters with my map. My trackpad is a Ouija board. You know, I'm just I'm not afraid of it anymore. But there was that time where I wasn't sure mm -hmm. until I found your book years mm -hmm. ago and heard you on an interview of Jim Harold's ah, podcast right. right years ago. Mm -hmm. This was 10 plus. Oh, we're going back. 2012 or 13, I think it was, yeah, that era. Yeah. 
And so I guess I'm just, I don't think about there still being people. I mean, I guess I'm, I'm confusing things, but in this chapter of the book, he was talking about like, well, everybody knows that you shouldn't play with Ouija boards, right? And I guess in England, and you might know this answer in England, they're no longer selling Ouija boards with like the toys and the games and things like that. And so he's like, well, of course we know there's a reason why they don't sell Ouija board with the games. And I'm like, well, you must not live here in the States because they're with the games all the time. Uh -huh. So anyway, I was just taken back like, oh, I can't, I didn't really, I guess I forgot that there are still so many people with this mm -hmm. um, stigma, I guess, of the Ouija board. And so, I mean, I'll keep an eye on the comments, but in, in case there are people new to you, mm -hmm or haven't listened to your other appearances, you know, tell us your side of the Ouija board, a different yeah. side of the Ouija board or any right. talking board. Yeah, I just want to say a shout out real quickly. Hi, Amber. Yay, you made it. Tracy's here. Bill's here. I'm a few. I don't. Ben's here. Yeah. Anyway, I want to say hi to everybody. Oh, yeah. We had a lot come through just while I was blabbing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. And then the the, the, ha the hounds of hell, which is like another, like that's, we call, might call that cryptids or from another dimension. So not necessarily spirit, but, it, but yeah, so that's what I'm telling you. People have had experiences and I'm not here to discount anything. I had some really wicked experiences, not, not in a bad way, but just the mind amazing blowing experiences. I won't even talk publicly about yet. It's coming in my next book because I'm starting to get to the mm. point where I'm going to share and this night with the board, you guys. So let me answer your question about that. So it's not the board. I want to be really clear in this. The board does nothing. When people say they're, they're afraid of the Ouija board or don't play with the Ouija board, don't use the Ouija board, don't have Ouija boards in your home. It, that that's that's misinformation that's it's a, that's a uh that's in a sense uh not having an understanding that it's just a tool people go oh well those spirit attachments and okay so just buying your 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 phone you, you get so is it can somebody handle it before you did is there attachment to it i mean yeah i guess there's energetic attachments i mean but the thing is this you are so much more powerful than you think you are humans have free will we come here with that. We come with the divine within us. I can't speak with, about this without being spiritual about it because we're there's such a larger picture here, and this is why I believe and know what I what I talk about with the board. And, and plus, I've been using it what now fifty plus years now. I'm starting my fifty first year. So my thing is this: it's like it's not the tool it's yourself. If there's a fear of a tool, well, don't use it. But to say that's the same that means that's the way it should be for everybody is really showing your own fears. It's really projecting your own fears to others so they will accept you or be in the same boat with you. And I'm the kind of person that says, I don't want boundaries. I don't want boundaries in terms of having myself limitations of what I'm supposed to do and not do. And so I think because I was so young coming into the board, it was never, Santa Claus gave it to me. It was never touted as something negative. I was a Catholic. I was going to church. I got it on Christmas Day. Um, Go to church today, coming home using the Ouija board. It was never feared for me. So that gave me a, a you know, heads up with this tool. So it was always a, just something I could use. But did I think there were spirits in it or attached to it? No. And even if there are attachments, I don't let that affect me because we have the power of putting up those kind of spiritual boundaries. So I always say when people say those things and they seem very advanced uh, in their teachings and they can be. There's just one area of their life they're not so advanced in. And we're all not good at everything, okay? And there's so many spiritual things I don't have. I can't even put my foot in. I can't say, oh, yeah, I know about that because I don't. But I can say that if we look at this as a just a, tutorial, a tool, a neutral device that we use, check the user, the operator of the tool, and your own fears. Because what you believe is what you're going to receive and what you fear, this is what you're going to get because it's for your own projection. This gets back into the whole idea was that smell uh, for you or for everybody in the room or was it something that was created inside of you? This gets into the consciousness and awareness. How do we know that we're not actually in some kinesthetic, um, psychic way creating these experiences? I'm not opposed to idiom odor. All I can tell you is the information that comes through a board and my channeling is quite accurate and very good and very helpful for people. So when I try to break it down and go, this, 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 I, I, I don't know. I'm just going to tell you what I get. But to say and to limit somebody on what they can and can't do or just put a clause or a statement out there, not even a clause, a statement saying that is wrong, it's really speaking to their own limitations. So look at that, check that with them, and go about what feels and resonates for you. If it doesn't resonate for you, then you know it, don't use any tool. Don't use anything that doesn't resonate for you. 
I have friends that hate smartphones. So what do they do? They have dumb <laughs> phones, flip phones, right? Because it doesn't resonate for them. And I don't say that's bad. Don't use it. You're lacking in communication or technology. I just say that's where you, as far as you choose to go with technology. Fine. Not a problem with that. So see it that way, you guys. It's really you. It's you who uses the tool that matters. It has nothing to do with the board sitting around me. I have 86. It has nothing to do with that at all. It has to do with yourself. I happen to love and know how to channel using this tool. And I also ha- know how to channel off the board. And coming from a paranormal kind of investigator yeah. side of things, especially when those people, like I would, I would say Danny Robbins, I would, you know, he is on a search for finding answers. And mm-hmm. I'm just thinking if you're, if you're not worried about an EVP session, if you're not worried about using a spirit box, if you're not worried about communicating with a K2 meter, then I'm like, why would you be worried about the, like, to me, there's no difference. It's just, it's so weird now that I've been on this side of things for so long. I'm like, it's weird that people would be concerned about that if you're not concerned about the other things, you know? Well, as even when mediums say, oh, don't use board, but yet what are they doing? They're going into the unseen dimension <laughs> and bringing through information. I'm doing it. I'm just doing theatrics to show you how it looks yeah. on the board. And that just happens to how it works for me. So what's the difference? So it, that always makes me laugh too. And this is just old school technology. There's no batteries. There's no electronics uh, because it's us. We're electronics. We, we are electrical systems. We break through the information. And what you're talking about, all these electrical devices. Yeah, there's the, you're, you're going into the unseen dimension with, with new school. It's technology. So yeah, it's really, I, 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 I yeah. I don't even have to say anymore. It's because it's just, it, again, I have to look at the psychologically is showing me somebody else's own fears. That's where their fears are. That's not my fears, but if those are your fears. I respect that. I love it. Thank you for um, talking about that again. I guess, reminding us of these things and Amber, you rock. She does rock. We love you, Amber. And then Facebook user says, my outlook is like, I have no clue how to use a chainsaw. But some people can carve ice sculptures with one. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Great example. So I guess don't knock someone using the Ouija board if that's their thing. Right. Yeah. But I can tell you, I, I, I can't cut ice with these. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Not that sharp. laughs> but yeah, that's a great analogy, right? There's tools. And if you want to go extreme, you can talk about guns. Guns don't kill people. People kill people with their guns or other things or other instruments. So really enjoying all the information being given today, William. Thank you. Glad, you glad you joined us, everybody. It was really nice to be here with you guys in the parlor, on YouTube, on where else will we? Facebook. Yep. Everywhere. If you missed the beginning, uh, you really need to check out When Cats Had Wings, which is Karen's book that she co-authored with her cat, Jack. Mm-hmm. And Jack gave us a heads up about this book like six years or more ago, probably. On your show is where he announced it. On this show. And Thank I had no much. idea he was going to do that. He just jumped in. We're doing a live Ouija session. We did several of those with you. He just jumped we right did. in and wanted to tell everybody. Yeah, we had, we had some good fun then, didn't we? We did. But you've also, you don't have to use the board anymore since then. No, you pulled away from much. the board with all of your communication. Correct. And so I'm channeling more. I do a lot of readings for people and I'm not even using a board. I'm just channeling whatever with the information as it comes through. So, yeah. You don't need a board, you guys. You don't need a board. You can do this without it. And and Jack's story came through telepathically again via the board and via dreams and just sens- sensing him, feeling him, and just getting messages that way. And so really, we are all our own walking Ouija boards, I said earlier, which just means you are all on – it's just superpowers, which are not really super. They're natural. We have all these senses, clair senses, what they call them, within ourselves that we can develop. And we were talking earlier about Patrick. I think I, some of that I see with him is the smelling and his ability to hear. And that could be from your musical training as well. And maybe that's why you're a musician. And maybe. And that's that's why I tend to rely on tools like EVP and exactly. you know SS Method and Spirit Box, because that's a sense I can use and feel comfortable with. Exactly. We all have these abilities and we just develop them. And just what, you know, the Ouija board has been one way I've been able to fine tune hone them and develop mine even more so because the tool really helps you. I found as I use the tool, all those abilities, those clear senses started developing more and more. And I began to trust to receive the messages. And I didn't get off the board until after 40 years, 39 years of using this tool 
39, 40 years is when I started working off the board too. I still work on the board. As a matter of fact, uh, Rodney will be in town, my board partner. We will get together mm, this next, this upcoming week and we'll do a session five for about four or five hours. So. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. That's crazy. Oh, I, you know me, I get energized. I'm just, I love it. Yeah. I just know from any time I have sat with the board with anyone and, and with you, I have to put so much energy toward it because, you know, I don't ever get much from the board. But I have to take lots of breaks. Like every two minutes, I'm like, oh, my God, my arm hurts. I have to stop. I know. You have to do like weight <laughs> calisthenics. You have to work with your arms. I, in my workshops, I really teach people how to work with their other muscles back here. Instead of up here, you work with these back muscles. I teach all this. When I, I, when I teach workshops, I show everybody how to sit there for the long term if you need to learn that. I think my problem is my torso. I have like yeah. zero torso. Exactly. And so my arms are way lower and it's they're like have to like be lifted yeah. up above. So anyway, I'm I need like a specially built Ouija chair. table or something. A chair. chair. Yeah. There you go. There you go. A, a perch, if you will. Oh. I I usually call my <laughs> piano bench a perch because I always have to have a higher <laughs> piano oh, bench. Okay. That's not a bad idea. You could invent something like that for yourself. Yeah, the kids at school will be like, Mr. Keller, do you need us to get your perch? <laughs> oh, that is so precious. <laughs> well, um, if you have any final thoughts, give us your final thoughts. But also want to I put up the banner with your website, which is Karen A. Dahlman dot com. And in the show notes of this episode, anything we talked about, including some of the articles that Karen talked about, from her site, we will put those in the show notes as well as some of her recent appearances. Cause this, uh, she has been, I don't know if it's been 10 times yet, but you have been, uh, least, you've been on the show a lot. If not more, you and I used to host, uh, the Halloween thing together in the very beginning. Yes. We've been on some other Halloween specials w with another medium. Well, we've, we've done, we've done a lot of shows actually. It might yeah. be above 10. <laughs> yeah, might be. And we've done some shows that we've, we've done a lot of appearance that aren't even on the podcast. You know? Right. You've been on my <laughs> show. We've done a lot of yeah. live shows with the Ouija board. We've done a lot. Yeah. We have done a lot together. Um, and if you guys want to see that video, you might want to link to this, Patrick, the one where okay. I talk about my book coming out. And that's where I show the video, the clip from your video of Jack walking through the message we were receiving. Yeah. It's, it's, it, I, I was like, what? I mean, can't make this stuff up. It's just the way it goes. So final words, you guys, one thing, we didn't talk so much about the Ouija board until the very end. The Ouija board is just the tool. You're the one that operates this tool. You're the one that does all the work. And, and I'm going to call it channeling because that's what you're doing. It's really important to understand this, this channeling on the board is no different. I don't care what other people tell you. I don't care what people that, with their own fears or limitations will tell you. It's just a tool. You do all the work. You you use it in a way that allows the energies to connect with you. They're not coming through me. They never have. It's not like a, the spirits get in my body. That's never happened. People may talk about that. That's their thing. That is not my thing. My thing is I'm a, I'm a um I'm a sovereign being with free will. I'm a so sovereign being with my own thoughts and my own abilities, and I just allow myself to connect with the unseen dimensions and energies that are in there to bring forth messages or communications channeling, whatever that is that I'm bringing forth. That's all it is. So if you think about it more in those ways, that it's something external to you, meaning the board or this tool, that you really have the magic within you and the abilities, you're going to see that you're going to allow yourself not to feel limited or even be fearful of this tool. But it does, it can take time for some people. I mean, religion has done a lot to this tool as well, as so is Hollywood, as so as some people have spooked themselves out and had some weird experiences. That's not to deny, that's not to deny that at all. But what I teach is how not to have that, but to have positive connections with your higher self, your inner self, your animals, spirit guides, transition loved ones. I talk to wildlife. You can see videos on that I do. You name it. If, you're, if your mind's not limited, you can really communicate with a lot of different conscious beings. And, and I'll be getting more into that as I move into the, the new year. I'll be talking more and more. And, and my book will come out about that as well. So that's really all I have to say about that. That's a lot. I always, you know, can always say more. But thank you, guys. <laughs> thank you, Patrick. Thank you all for being here. And I really appreciate all you guys' great questions and time. We're trying to maybe work up an excuse to be in the same room again soon. And so I cannot wait to see you in person to have some other goofy stories. But I want to thank you for coming back on and doing this live hot mess as it always is. <laughs> doing this no. live with me and sharing your energy and your time. And you rock. Ah, Woohoo! Thanks, Patrick. Thank you so much. You rock too. 
I miss you. <laughs> I always miss you. I always miss you. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in and for watching. And Tracy says, apparently, we're entertaining, so we're glad we can entertain you. You haven't seen anything yet, Tracy. <laughs> yeah, we've kept it kind of calm today. There's, uh, oh, and Jeffrey says, never a hot mess. Thank uh, you. <laughs> this is sweet. Yay. Jeffrey's, Jeffrey's great, too. We've had, we've done some shows together. Yeah. Happy Halloween early. Happy early Halloween. Yes. Um, I love the fact that you straight up have a kitty cat skeleton on your pumpkin, by the way. That's nice. Of course. Okay. Well, everybody. Have a good day. Karen, you rock. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. For show notes, including links to anything we may have mentioned in this episode, visit bigseance.com. And you can continue the discussion and hang out with a great community of paranerds by joining us in the Big Seance Parlor on Facebook. Want to hear your voice in a future episode? Go to bigseance.com slash feedback to learn how. Thank you so much for listening. Unfortunately, it's time to blow the candles out, but we'll see you and light them again next time. Thank you to the following Super Paranerds who support the show at patreon.com slash big seance. Jennifer Scanlon, Michael Henson, Daryl, Anne Marie Sullivan, Natalie N., Kim Robb, Josiel Lorenzo, and Susan Davey. My supporters at the parlor guest level, who can be found at big seance.com slash parlor guests, are Anne Rekovich from OzParatech.com, Dina DeCastro of Dina DeCastro Astrology, Janae Michaels from Grey House Tarot and Farm Artifacts, Amy Park Gedicke of AmyParkG.com, Lonnie Scott from WeirdWebRadio.com, Lana and John of Carbon Lilies, Midge Munster from MidgeMunster.com, Heather N. of DancingBeeAlchemy.com, Diane Razmataz, Tracy King, Andrew Watson, Amy Taylor, Christine Rath Selhi, Mindy Kentop, Hope Battaglia, Cass and Bailey, Melissa Armour, Janet Shaw Bins, Bruce Williams, and Christopher Kohler. And I currently have four awesome listeners who support the show at the $10 level, which isn't even a thing. Those awesome paranerds are Glenna Becker, Steve Skinner, James Wilfong, and Peggy Hagen. I also have three awesome listeners who support this show at the completely made-up $20 level. And those awesome peeps are Norman and Linda Keller, that's my mom and dad, and Kevin Gilbert. Thank you, Paranerds.